God will direct you. The Bible says, be ye not unwise, but understanding. Understand what the will of the Lord is. If we will seek Him, God will show us how to be blessed. God will break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Welcome today to Evangel Presents. And I want to invite you to be with us in our special services today. And if you're watching here by television, and you have a special prayer need, we have a phones available where you can call and we'll take your phone call and pray with you and believe God for something good to happen in your life. You may be sick. Your family may be going through a real struggle. Maybe you're homebound, but you're not locked out from God. And we'll be glad to minister to you. Also, uh, I want to say tonight, uh, we have a special, unusual type of uh, service. It's going to be um, a, a tailgating service, and that is bring food, and at 5 o'clock, we're going to have a red-blue tailgate church service, and it'll be out in the parking lot, and uh, there's a barbecue uh, uh, theme and so it's just going to be really good and you'll have an opportunity to be a part of that at 5 p.m. tonight and you know that kind of food's the best food in the world when you go to one of these church picnics and so that'll be this evening but I want to invite you to be in our to join our services now I'm going to be preaching and sharing then I'm going to be praying for people I'm going to be praying for you that God will heal you that God will bless you that something good will happen to you this week. And I want you to expect for a miracle. Let's join our services now.
in the time of war. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Come on and pray. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. How many of you are glad that this is a church where you can lift your hands? How many of you are glad this is a church where you can shout? How many of you are glad this is a church you can dance? Come on, just take a minute and just praise the Lord however you want to praise Him today. Come on, just praise Him however you want to praise Him today. Lord, we worship you. Woo! Lord, we honor your name. You are the King of kings. You are holy. God, we worship you, Lord. We lift our hands. Lord, we thank you, God, for your great love. We thank you that you're here in a powerful way. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lay your hand on your heart today. Pray this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I belong to you, all of me. I give you my mind. I give you my heart. I give you my body. I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. I've got a great calling on my life. I shall fulfill the calling of God in my life. The enemy is a liar. God is blessing me. He's touching my family. He's using me to reach other people. In Jesus' name, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm going through troubles, but when I focus on you, my troubles get small and you get greater because you're a great God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift the hand of the Lord. Lord, we bless you today. Lord, we're praisers. We are worshipers today, Lord. Lord, we're here, God, not just to go through the emotions, but we're here to worship you. How many worshipers we got in the house? Come on, lift your hands. We're here to worship you, Lord. Come on, we're here to worship you. We're not just going through the motions. We're worshipers. Hallelujah. We're in the presence of God today. Hallelujah. Come on, sing that again. Sing it again and just worship the Lord today. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble will hear the rub and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my troubles. Some of you are glad he delivers you from all of your troubles. Come on, I'm going to praise him when I feel like it and I'm going to praise him when I don't feel like it because he's the deliverer of all my problems all of my troubles hallelujah we honor your name today we bless your name today hallelujah i want you to join the hand of the person next to you and begin to pray for them right now come on pray for them and just speak a blessing and a prayer over them today lord come on just speak a prayer out loud lord i pray in jesus name you'll bless that one on my right you'll bless that one on my left you're in the house of god today god's gonna do something great in your life you've got a great calling upon your life God's going to honor you. God's going to bless you and help you in all that you do. Your body's healed in the name of Jesus. You shall walk with God. God's power and strength is in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your whole family is saved. Your whole family is getting touched by the power of God. And I thank you that you're my brother or my sister today. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Now lay your hand on your heart. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray your will shall be done. Come on, sing it out. Just say it out loud. Lord, your will shall be done in my life. Your will shall be done in my life. Everything is going to be okay. Come on, just say that out loud. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Lord, you're just helping me in every area of my life. I'm not going to worry. But God, you're a great God. You're a lot bigger than any of my problems. You're a lot bigger than any of my troubles. You are a lot bigger than anything I've, I've come across. 
And I thank you, Lord, for your presence today. Hallelujah, in the name of the Lord. Lay your hand on your head. My head and my mind shall be filled with the word of God. I'm not going to worry. I'm going to make the right decisions in Jesus' name with your help. In the name of the Lord. Put your hands out in front of you. Everybody say, Lord, anoint my hands. Lord, we ask you to anoint our hands, God, to help people, to do good works, Lord, to bless people, to be a blessing to others, Lord. Lord, I can lay my hands upon the sick and pray for them, and the power of God can touch their lives and heal them in the name of the Lord. Come on, let's pray over our feet right now. My feet are, my steps are ordered of the Lord. Wherever I go, wherever I am, I'm not going to be there by accident. I'm going to be in the right place at the right time. God is leading me. Nothing happens to me by accident. God's angels are around me, protecting me and blessing me and helping me in all that I do. And I thank you. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. Now lift your hand. Lord, I thank you for the shield of faith. Come on, just say that. I thank you for the shield of faith in my life. My faith level is rising. My faith level, I believe in God for things that I don't even see yet. But Lord, my faith is rising. And God, you're going to do great things in my life. Great things in my city. In the name of the Lord. Stretch your hands towards our city. Come on, say, say, we pray for Mayor Fisher today. Come on, just speak it out loud. I pray for Mayor Fisher. I pray for the leaders of this city. Lord, I thank you, God, for what you can do. Lord, we pray that righteousness shall reign in our city. We pray there'll be peace in our city. Lord, we just come against evil and wickedness and hatred, racism. Get out of our town. Lord, we speak the peace of God that only Jesus can bring. Hallelujah, in the name of the Lord. Lift the hand of the Lord. I pray for our country. Come on, let's pray for our leaders right now. Whether we like them or we don't like them, we're told to pray for those in authority. Lord, we pray, oh God, for the leaders of our land. God, they need to humble themselves before God. They need to humble themselves, Lord. And Lord, and stand for righteousness and stand for truth. Lord, we pray for President Trump. We pray for the leaders of Congress. We pray, oh God, for those, Lord, that, that are on the Supreme Court. Lord, we pray, oh God, that they'll stand for righteousness. And if not, God, I pray they'll get out of office. They'll leave office. They'll go somewhere else and do something else. In the name of the Lord, we need our nation back. We need a move of God in our nation. Lord, let it happen in Kentucky. Let it happen in Louisville. Let it happen, Lord, right here, right now. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many can just feel God's presence here today? Um, come on, would you just close your eyes and lift your hands and just worship him for a minute? Just say, Lord, speak to me today. Lord, speak to me today, Lord. I humble myself before your sight, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, for your presence today. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, just forgive me. Come on, just speak it out loud. Say, Lord, forgive me for any sin in my life. I repent today. I want to live for God. I want the Holy Spirit. I want righteousness in my life. God's presence is more important to me than anything in my life. And Lord, I lift my hands and I just call upon your name today, God. Lord, you said that you love those that love love you. God, you, you said in your word, you're going to crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Lord, you said you'll heal our body. Lord, you said, oh God, that you'll satisfy our mouth with good things. Lord, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I don't need anything besides you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for your presence today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just encourage you to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit when you're in the services. Just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Let God speak to you. There's a great verse in the book of Psalms 73, and it says, I had all these troubles, and I had all these, I looked at wicked people, and I thought, man, they're prospering, they don't have any troubles, and I got all these troubles, and I'm serving God. And on and on and on and on, the psalmist goes, 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 and then he says this, he says, until, everybody say until, I came into the house of the Lord. Come on, say that. Until I came into the house of the Lord. And then I understood. How many of you know there's revelation in the house of God? Come on, give me an amen. There's revelation in the house of God. God will speak to you right in the service. He'll heal you right in the service. He'll show you what to do right in the middle of a service. Right in the middle of worship time. God will speak to you. God will show you what you need to do. He'll answer your prayers. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
If you take your Bible and hold it to the Lord, just hold it real high. If you don't have a Bible, hold your hand up. But I want everyone to say with me out loud, this is the Word of God. This is God's plan for my life. It's a light into my pathway. It's a lamp into my feet. It's a road map to heaven. And that's where I'm going. Because I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I can be what it says I can be. In Jesus' name. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of John, John chapter 6. And I want to begin reading in verse 38. John 6, 38. Would you say that please? John 6, 38. The Word of God says, For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And then in verse 42, I came down from heaven, Jesus said. In verse 47, Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I'm the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. In verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Father, anoint your word with great power in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. Six times in this chapter, in the sixth chapter of John, Jesus said, I came down from heaven. And if you don't get anything else out of this service today, I want you to get this. Heaven is a real place. Just like Kentucky's a real place, and the United States is a real place, and Germany is a real place, heaven is a real place. It's not something that a bunch of preachers got together and we made up for people to feel better when they pass and when they, they die. But when God made us, he made us to have an instinct, an instinct for certain things, for our protection. He made us to have an instinct for water, so we get thirsty. If we didn't, we'd dehydrate for food, so we would have strength for shelter, so we would be protected. We all have one fear that we're born with, and that is the fear of falling. But we also have an instinct within every human being that there is a life after this life. And the only people who don't believe that are people who have gone to the university and some atheistic professor has gotten a hold of them and reprogrammed them and tried to deaden that instinct. But even an atheist on their deathbed, it seems they cry out to God. When God made animals, it's, it's very amazing. There's a lady who comes often, and she has these doves, these white doves, and actually they're pigeons. And she releases them at weddings. She releases them at funerals. And those uh, pigeons who can be in different areas where they've never been there before, brought in a closed container where they have, can't see out, they, they fly up in the air, they circle around, and then they head over to Valley Station where, where their home is. God put that GPS system in those, in those birds, in those pigeons. A fish, a salmon fish can be several years in the open seas and then there's an instinct that they're not going to live much longer. So they head back to the streams where they came from. They go up the waterfalls. They go up into those little pools where they were birthed. And there they have peace and they have rest in their last days. Well, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 are not Two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one falls to the ground. And your father knows about it in heaven. He knows the very number of hairs on your head. And then he says, how much more important are you than a sparrow? So if God made the animal kingdom in a, a nameless little bird, he put those instincts in a bird, how much more does God put his instincts in us? The Indians, they have their happy hunting grounds. The, the, uh, the, 
the pyramids in Egypt, they were built to contain all of the valuable possessions of the pharaohs when they went to their pagan form of heaven. We have a, a man in this church, uh, Kedrick Timbo. He comes from the royal family of the Zulus. His great-great-great-grandfather was Shaka Zulu. They came from a kingly family. When Shaka D Zulu died, Kedrick told me they took 15 young girls and they buried them alive in his grave so they could travel with him to their pagan Zulu heaven. But it wasn't until the Bible was written that we had a clear understanding what heaven was really like. We're told that when a person dies, their spirit, it comes up right out of their mouth because life and death is in the mouth. They're escorted up to heaven, which is in the regions of the north. For the Bible says, promotion cometh neither from the south, nor the east, nor from the west, indicating it comes from the north. The satellites have, have uh, said there is a, a, a hole in the north. There's a dark hole. There are stories of how astronauts, as they have circled the earth and they've come close and over the North Pole, they've heard music and they've heard unusual sounds that have happened. I believe that's heaven. But we know that heaven is a real place. The Bible says that the main city in heaven is the New Jerusalem. There may be, be many cities, but that one city is 1,500 miles square. That's from Bangor, Maine, over to Kansas City, Kansas. That's from, from the farthest point in Michigan all the way down to Key West, Florida. That's 1,500 miles. And then it's 1,500 miles high. If there were 100 feet in every floor in heaven, that would be 750,000 floors, and that's just the main city. That main city could fit into the original Garden of Eden, which was bordered by four rivers, the Tigris, Euphrates, the Nile, and the Pison River. It would set exactly in those perimeters. In heaven, we understand that it was made in the, uh, earth was made in the image of heaven, just like we were made in the image of God. We were created in his image. Well, earth was created in heaven's image. But in heaven, there's not the pollution. There's not the sin that has dis disfigured our, our land. There are gardens in heaven, but they don't have the weeds. There are rivers in heaven. The Bible talks about the, the uh, crystal river of life. It's not like the muddy Ohio River. I read about a woman who she went through that river of life. She had an out-of-body experience. She said the water literally flowed through her body. It just, it was like it washed out all the weakness, all the hurts, all the pains. She said it was like living water. In heaven, there are books that contain the secrets of the universe. We read about the book of life. In heaven, there are fruit trees. The Bible says they are given for a different fruit every month. And uh, they are called the tree of life that we will eat of when we get to heaven. Heaven is a real place. There's animals in heaven. The streets are pure as gold. Pastor Kevin's father died and uh, had an out-of-body experience and they kept him alive for almost a week. And during that time, he went to heaven Later, when they took him off the, uh, the uh, life support, he told and described heaven. He said, yes, there's streets, and they are beautiful. They're as pure as gold, just like the Bible says. And so Paul, he wrote about it. He said, I, I'm not allowed to even share all the things that I saw, but it was joy unspeakable and full of glory. Aren't you glad that one day we're going to go to heaven? Amen. Hallelujah. I had a, a friend of mine who went on the 21-day fast with us. He started in January, the same time we started. He lived in another city. And on the 18th day of the fast, he said, I didn't know if I could make it. 
and I was uh, laying in bed. It was about one in the morning, and he said, suddenly, the, the uh, ceiling opened, and I, it was a door, and I, I went up into heaven. He said, when I, I got there, he said, I saw my mother. Well, he, his mother uh, died when he was about 12 years old. And he had been angry at God. He had been angry at his mother. And he went up to his mother and he said, Mama, you weren't even there for me when I grew up. And, and you, you weren't even there when we had our first son, your grandson. And she took her hand and did this. And suddenly it just opened. It was like a curtain opened. And you could see his little boy. And there was some kind of evil creature, it seemed like, was coming to get that boy. And she said, do you think I would ever let that take and touch my grandson? She said, there are things that I can do here in heaven that I could never do for you when I was here on this earth. Here on this earth, we are a part of the body of Christ. We're his hands, we're his voice, we're his feet. But when we get to heaven, we don't cease to be a part of the body of Christ. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. And I believe there are things in heaven that your mother, your dad, your family members are able to do for you that they couldn't do while they were here on this earth. And they could do more for you many times than you could ever do for yourself. I told the story how I needed to know some information. And I, I had to know this. We were in a, a financial uh, situation, the church, and the only one who knew that was my dad. And he had died. And I prayed and asked God to, to show me what it was. Well, my, my, uh, I had a friend who had a vision to heaven, and he saw my dad. And he said, you call Bob and give him this information. He needs to know it. He called me at 1 o'clock in the morning. He said, I went to heaven and saw your dad, and he told me to tell you this. And it was exactly what I needed to know. The first time I went to Korea, I was uh, 21 years old. I was in seminary. I was a pastor in a little church. And, and my dad told me about this great church in Korea. And so I went there, and there was a missionary. His name was Brother Swain. And Brother Swain says, why don't you go with me? And he took me way up into uh, the uh, part of Korea, he was holding a meeting there. Uh, we checked into the hotel. We had to take our shoes off when we went into this hotel. They served us a raw egg. That's what we had for dinner. I'll never forget it. And Brother Swain died. And his wife came back to the States, and she was in Washington State. And Dr. Cho was having to go to Washington, and he was in prayer. And God said, I want you to meet Miss Swain when you get to Washington, and you tell her that I still have a plan for her, and I have a man that will fulfill her life, and she is to remarry. And she will object to this, but I have a, they, they had a secret name, a nickname that her husband called her. And as a sign to her, this is the name. So when he got to Washington State, to uh, he met with Miss Swain and said, listen, God spoke to me that he still has a plan for your life and he's got a, a man he's going to bring into your life and you're to marry, get married. She said, oh, no, I would never want to do that. There was only one man for me. Well, the Lord showed me that and as a sign to you, God gave me the nickname that your husband had for you and he shared with her that nickname. She cried. She said, nobody knew that. Not even our kids knew that. And uh, Brother Cho said, after I left there, I forgot the name. And I've never been able to think of it since. But in just a few months, God brought a man into her life. And, and uh, they were married. And they began to do the work of God again. Heaven is a real place. Can I hear an amen? amen. But just as heaven is a real place, hell is a real place too. It's a place where the Bible says the worm does not die. It's not quenched. It said, Jesus said, it is so bad, the weeping turns to wailing 
and the wailing turns to the gnashing of teeth. And in the book of Luke, chapter 16, it begins in the 19th verse. And, and I want to read some of this because it's so interesting. Because it's Jesus, and Jesus begins to tell this story. And he says, there was a certain rich man. I don't believe this is a parable. When it says there was a certain rich man, I believe there was a certain man. Tradition says his name was Dives. There was a certain rich man which clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. To wear purple meant royalty. Purple is the most unusual uh, and least um, colored uh, color in, that there is. There's only a few fruits that are even purple. It's a sign of royalty, and this meant he was friends with the king. He, maybe he owned a bank. Maybe he was in the stock market if he lived today, but he was very, very successful business-wise. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. Now, it doesn't say this rich man was wicked. It doesn't say that he cheated people. It doesn't even name a sin that he committed. But you, do, you go to hell not because you're bad. You go to hell because you don't accept Jesus into your life. There are some good people that are in hell, and there are some bad people who made it to heaven. The thief on the cross didn't get, on the, get executed because of being good, but he turned to Jesus and he said, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, today, I'll see you in paradise. And so you see this man, you, this certain rich man, Dives, the tradition says, which means favor. And Lazarus, which means God is my help. Lazarus, when he died, maybe they just found his body. There probably wasn't even a burial service. No one cried over the loss of Lazarus, but the angels escorted his spirit up to heaven. The rich man died, and they had a big statewide funeral. It cost maybe $100,000. They had a beautiful mausoleum built uh, in honor of him, but he went to hell. And it says here that it, uh, in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. In hell you can see. You can feel he was in torment, which indicates he was depressed, not only physically tormented, mentally tormented, and he seeth Abraham afar off. In hell you can, you can feel, you can taste, you can see, you can get hungry, you can smell the sulfur, you have a memory, you have remorse, you have torment, and you have no hope. That's what hell is like. And there he could see over where Lazarus was. Now, hell then and hell now is different. If a person gets arrested, they're taken down to the courthouse or taken down to the, the jail downtown. They're put there and they wait, await their trial. Well, that's what hell is. When you die, you go to hell. It's a place of the bottomless pit. It's a place of torment. It's a place where the most evil, wretched people who ever lived are are there, but you're awaiting trial. You're awaiting trial, and that is the great white throne judgment trial. And when that trial takes place, then you are cast into the lake of fire. And when this was written, it was before the cross. And so in hell, it was divided into two sections. There was those who were in rebellion against God, then there was a great gulf that no man could cross over. And then there was Abraham's bosom 
for those people who died in faith. They went to Abraham's bosom. Abraham was there. Isaac, Jacob was there. David was there. Lazarus was there. And so when Jesus was crucified on the cross, the Bible says in Ephesians, he was taken down to hell and he was taken illegally into the part that Satan was made for Satan and those who were rebels with Satan. It's interesting, Jesus was without sin. So when he was taken there, he was taken illegally and God had made a lease with mankind, with Adam. And Satan took that lease from Adam. Adam willfully gave it to him when he sinned. And so Satan took the place where Adam once had. But Satan broke that lease because Jesus should have never been taken there because he was innocent of any sin. And so the Bible says Jesus took from the devil the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And then he went across this great span that no man could ever cross. And he went into Abraham's bosom and they began to cheer him. Lazarus began to cheer him. Elijah, those uh, prophets who died, Jeremiah, they, they, were wel they welcomed Jesus. And the Bible says he took those in captivity and he led them out of captivity and he took them to heaven. So today when we die, we don't go to purgatory. We don't go to some soul sleep. We don't go to hell. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We go straight to, to God. And so hell now is enlarged. Hell is twice as large as it was during the times of Christ. And it was built for the devil and his angels. It was not meant for us. In hell there was regret. In hell, there's trouble. In hell, there's every evil work. I was at a funeral yesterday, and Pastor Kevin, he preached that, and he told one of the greatest stories. And I asked him if I could tell it. And so this really isn't my story. It's Pastor Kevin's. Give Pastor Kevin a great big hand. Don't you love him? There was a rich man. His name was Carl. Lived up in the Yellowstone area of Wyoming, had a huge ranch. In those areas, sometimes you have 15,000 acres. A lot of guys have 10,000 acres. And so it was during the time of the Roundup, and they were getting these uh, cattle in, they were branding them, and he decided to ride up to the, to the hills where they were, they were doing this. And it took him a while to ride there, and he, there was a line shack, and he went in, and some of his guys were in there eating. And there was Hans. Hans had worked for him for years. And Hans was eating a cheese sandwich, and he bowed his head to pray over this food. Well, Carl went over and said, Hans, if all I had to eat was a cheese sandwich, I don't know if I'd want to be praying and thanking God for that. I mean, that's not very much. Hans says, no, no, no. God's been so good to me. I thank him for everything. I'm so grateful for whatever God does for me. And Carl kind of laughed. He said, well, I'm not so sure about that. And so as he was leaving, Hans got up and he said, uh, Mr. Carl, I, I want to tell you something. I had a dream. I had a dream last night. And in that dream, the richest man in this county died. And Carl says, well, you know, that's, I'm probably worth more than anybody in this county, but I'm I don't feel bad or anything. He said, well, I'm just telling you the, the dream. And I believe it was from God. So Carl got back on his horse, and he headed down, uh, down to the, his house. And, and as he's riding, he said, oh, man, you know, I, I don't feel good. I've got, man, I've got a little indigestion. And then he started feeling some pressure around his heart and started breathing kind of... Uh, uh, unusual breathing pattern. And when he got to the house, he called the doctor. The doctor said, well, Carl, you had a checkup just last month. I mean, everything was fine. He said, well, w would you mind to come over? So I'm concerned. So the doctor came over. They checked him out and said, Carl, you're fine. And I guarantee you one thing, you're not going to die tonight. So Carl went to bed that evening. 
He finally got to sleep, and about 1 o'clock in the morning, somebody started beating on his door. It was one of his foremen, and he said, uh, Mr. Carl, I hate to tell you this, but Hans died today. And sometimes the richest person in this town is not the one who has the biggest bank account, not the one who lives in the biggest house, but it's the one who really has their treasures in heaven. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. And we, we thank God for God blessing us and success, but it's not what we do here on this earth and how great and the accomplishments we receive here. It's what we do for God. And this rich man, even though he made a lot of money, he went to hell where Lazarus went to heaven. In hell, we know this. In hell, there is no water. In hell, there is remorse. In hell, there is uh, everlasting destruction from the presence of God. Hell is likened in Revelations 19 to the lake of fire, which the wicked will be cast into. It's likened into a bottomless pit in Revelations 20. Hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. was never prepared for us. Hell is a place where you can never repent. It's a place of torment. It's a place where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. There are people that argue about this. You hear it. You hear it on the university campus. You hear it at Ford Motor Company. You hear it wherever you are. Well, God is so loving God would not send someone to hell. If I thought God was like that, I'd never want to serve a God like that. My God is a God of love. And you know, I agree. He is such a God of love. He sent Jesus. He sent Jesus so nobody has to go to hell. It's not God's plan that any be lost. And if they're lost, it's not because of God. It's because of their rebellion against God and not accepting Jesus. Well, I, I don't buy all this stuff that it's just Jesus. I mean, I know a lot of good people, a lot of great people that are Muslim, that are, are Buddhist, and I know a lot of people that don't even go to church, and they're better people than some of the people that do go to church. Well, now all that sounds really good, but you know, that's just not true. Jesus is the only way. In the book of... In the book of uh, John, you read this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by me. The Bible says that if we try to go to heaven any other way, we become a thief and a liar. Jesus is the only door to heaven. I was at a, a breakfast, a, a prayer breakfast. A fellow invited me to come from the church, and there was a, a someone who's on the news of one of the network stations, and he gave this testimony. He said, all roads lead to the same place. Doesn't matter if you're Muslim. It doesn't matter what faith you are. If you're good, then God comes in many different forms. You know, all that sounds good to the mind. It's just not true. And Jesus is the only way to heaven. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Well, when a person uh, gets to heaven, it's through their good works. And if they've done a lot of good things, I believe they'll go to heaven. And if they've done some bad things, I believe they go to, to hell. Well, it's not your good works that get you to heaven. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Hallelujah to the Lord. Folks, heaven is real, and hell is real too. Someone uh, once argued the point, they said, I don't believe that God is exclusive, and I don't believe that God would send anybody to hell because, unless they're really, really bad. I can see Hitler going to hell. I can see uh, some mass murderer going to hell, but... You know, just because you said this or you do that, I don't believe God would send you to hell for something like that. Because basically, man is good. Well, actually, man is not good. 
basically man is bad. In Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things without a cure. And who can understand it? Hell was created for the devil. It was created for Satan. And Satan rose up and he had a civil war in heaven. And finally, he convinced one third of the angels they could overpower God. And so God cast them out. And he stripped from them their illumination or their, their bodies. And so when an angel comes, he's a disembodied spirit. And so they look for people they can possess. They'll possess animals. They'll possess a cat before they will a dog. Because a cat is a weaker type species. They look for people. And they possess people. And so the Bible says in the last chapter, chapter 22 of the book of Revelations, in verse 11, just before he signs off, he says this, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that's filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Or in other words, he says this, We're a spirit being. We're more than just a body, we're a spirit being, and we're going to live forever. So if you're wicked down on this earth, you're going to be wicked for the rest for eternity. If you are filthy, you'll be filthy still. So I'm not going to take any more rebels in heaven. I've had enough of the rebels. And they're not going to come into heaven. And only those who are righteous, who have right standing with me, are going to be allowed in heaven because we become new creations in Christ Jesus. And so people will not change if they're rebellious, if they're sinful, if they're wicked. When they die eternally, they remain that way. When I was growing up, there was a lady by the name of Marietta Davis. My dad knew her, my mother knew her. And she got sick and for nine days she was in a coma. And during that time, uh, God took her to heaven. Uh, actually, she wasn't even really living for God. She was, had a lot of conviction for sin, but she said this angel came, and when she first saw it, it was like a star. And this light got so big, and she went with this angel, and she went to heaven. She said you could hear the music. She called it the outskirts of heaven. She said, when we came into the outskirts, uh, there were trees, it had fruits on it, there were birds. She said, the most beautiful birds she'd ever seen, and to hear them, hear their songs. And she said, the flowers smelled so unbelievable. You could just smell them. It was, it was like a perfume. She saw angels. Uh, she heard the music. The angel said to her, said, we've got to continue on. They came in, and there Jesus met her and welcomed her. Said one of the things that got her attention, there was this huge cross. And everyone revered this cross because they knew the victory that had taken place through the cross. She said she recognized people that she had known here on this earth. There was not a care. There wasn't anybody that was old in heaven. But there were a lot of children. And there were some places that were just communities for infants. And these children, they went to school. And they were taught, only there was nothing to hinder them from learning. And this angel said, on earth there are demons that will come and try to hinder children from learning and from understanding. There's not that influence here. When my, uh, my wife and I, we lost uh, three babies. One was about, uh, she was about six and a half months, and we lost that child. We lost another at four months. And uh, a lady came to me, and she said to Pastor Bob, she said, I had a dream last night, and I saw that little baby. It was a boy. And there was a, a lady, and she described my grandmother to a T. And she was looking after, after that baby. 
and she's taking care of it till you and Margaret get to heaven, then you all can raise that baby. And so if you've lost a child, God takes care of that child. That child's in good hands. That child is going to be smarter than you are, I guarantee you. And someone in your family that has died before you is watching over that child. And when you get there, you'll have the privilege of raising that child. She said these angels, it was amazing because angels are assigned to people. And they watch you every moment. They watch you every second. They record everything and they watch over you. She said she just could not, it was more than anything she could fathom. And then the angel said, now I want to take you to another place. She said they began to go into the depths and despair. And she said the whole atmosphere changed. I could smell the sulfur. And I knew I was going into hell. She said as, I, as we were going there, it looked like there was a tree and, and some fruit. And I reached over to get that piece of fruit, and it was a mirage, and, and what looked like a fruit actually burned my hand. said, every wicked, every vile, every evil person you could imagine, you could feel their influence. She said, it, it, it be immediately, the depression, the misery, the torture, the putrid smell was almost more than I could, I could handle. There were two major rulers, she said. There was one was chaos, and the other was night. Said nothing could compare with this on this earth. She said, I, I saw people that I had recognized on earth, and they were there. They're tormented. And when she came out of that, that uh, coma, she gave her life to God. She would go and give her testimony. Um, Marietta Davis, and she told how, how hell is real and heaven is real. Now today, you may be here and you say, Pastor Bob, you know, I, I'm, I'm a pretty good guy. I'm a pretty good lady. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't stolen from anybody. But you know, there are sins of commission where we go out and we do things. And then there are sins of disobedience where God tells us to go over to this person. God tells us to help this individual. God tells us to talk to this person about the Lord. God tells us to do things. One time when I was just a teenager, God told me to go talk to this fellow. His name was Doug. And I didn't do it. And Doug died that week. And I've, all, I've often thought how Maybe God would have used me if I'd just been obedient. Samuel told about the sin of prayerlessness. He got, God forgive me from the sin of prayerlessness. So there are sins of commission and there are sins of omission because we have not done what God told us. We, we've harbored unforgiveness. We've harbored hatred, racism, prejudice. I mean, no, you go to hell if you're a member of the Ku Klux Klan. You go to hell if you are a member of a group that hates one another. You can't go to heaven doing that stuff. And so I want every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here and you say, Pastor Bob, there's things in my life that I know is not right, and I need God to deliver me, to set me free, I... I not only want to be clean, I want to be squeaky clean. Can I see your hand? Just slip it up. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm going to pray for you right where you are. Yes, 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 yes. God bless you over here. If you are into pornography, if you're flirting with another man's wife, if you're doing things that you know is wrong, stop it right now. Stop it. Because that can open a door that will cause you to lose your soul. How many are here and say, Pastor Bob, I'm not as close to God as I used to be. And I don't want to be lukewarm. Pray for me. Can I see your hand? Just slip it up. Yes, 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 yes. How many are here and say, Pastor, I, 
I've got members in my own family that are not saved. They're going to hell. Can I see your hand? That represents a lot of people here tonight, today. I want us all to stand, everybody standing. I want you to place your right hand over your heart. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, you have a plan for me. And I ask you to forgive me. Give me of sins that I've done, of things I've said, of, of wickedness that nobody knows about. But Lord, you know about it. And I ask that you would forgive me. May the blood of Jesus cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, you, there's been things you've told me to do, told me to say, and I haven't done it. And I ask you to forgive me of that too. May I be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And anything you tell me, or I even think you tell me, I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, save my family. May not one member of my household be lost. Now, I want you to begin to speak out loud, every member of your family right now. Father, we lift up our families to you. I bind every demon, every devil, every plan, every, every plot of the enemy. Father, I pray you'd speak to mothers and dads, and may they be very sensitive right now to their kids who may, may not be where they should be. Lord, show them. Show them right now. Speak to them right now to pray for their family members. Devil, we bind you. We curse you. You have no rights over our, our household. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now place your hand right here on your chest. Pray with me. Say, Lord God, I'm a soul winner. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And what you tell me to do and who you send across my pathway, I'll be faithful to speak to about their soul. Lord, before this day is over, send someone that I can witness to, that I can let the love of God touch through my life. Lord, I mean this prayer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lord. Now lift your hands up to the Lord right now. Let's just worship the Lord here just for a moment. Father, we praise your great name. Lord, we hallow your great name. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We praise the name of the Lord. We praise the name of the Lord. We worship the name of Jesus. Great is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now put your hand right on your chest again. I rebuke sickness, weakness. I rebuke those things that have attacked your body. I rebuke it. Come out, you devil. Come out, sickness. Come out, pain. I rebuke cancer, diabetes, heart disease. I rebuke any kind of growths in your body. Come out. Die, you devil. Die, you sickness, in Jesus' name. Be made whole for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Now raise your right hand. Father, I speak your favor, your blessing, your prosperity, your increase in the name of Jesus. Lord, open doors that are locked, closed. Lord, open doors of opportunity. I speak people to cross your pathway that can help you, can bless you, can increase you. In Jesus' name, you'll not be poor ever. You'll not be on the short end. You'll be on the big end in Jesus' name. I declare you shall be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. Big things, blessings are headed your way in the name of Jesus. I break off of you a spirit of poverty, a spirit of lack, a spirit of defeat. I come against depression and discouragement. Come out, you devil, in the name of Jesus. May you be the most positive person of faith that you know of in Jesus' name. May miracles begin to happen. May God answer your prayers when you pray. When you pray for people that are sick, may they get well. When you pray for people who who's are hurting, may the pain leave them. When you, are pray, when you pray for people who don't know what to do, may God show them what to do in Jesus' name. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. I want you to look down to your feet. Come on, put your hands, point them to your feet. I declare your feet are ordered of God. 
you're not going to make decisions that will hurt you and harm you, but your decisions will bless you. And every decision you make will be the right decision in Jesus' name. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I want those who've had, been going through hard times to do, begin to do this. Come on, just do it. You know what you're doing? You're shaking it off. Come on, just shake it off. Shake it off in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against us in judgment we shall condemn. For this is our heritage as servants of, as servants of God. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to draw a circle about you. That circle is God's protection. In that circle, there are a hundred angels. Those angels are going to protect you. Tomorrow is going to be a fantastic day. God's not going to allow you to be in car accidents. A gun won't shoot you. Fire won't burn you. God's going to be with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. A number of years ago, I was, I was in... I was in Israel, and Arafat was flying over in Libya, and he had a, he had a citation jet, and they were flying, they got into a sandstorm, and his bodyguards, two got in back of him, two got in front of him, and they strapped himself, themselves to Arafat. When that plane went down in the desert, the two guards behind him died, the two in front of him died. Arafat lived. Well, those angels strapped themselves around you. You get into a cushion. And you're going to live. And you're going to succeed. And you're going to be blessed in everything that you do in Jesus' name. He makes the crooked way straight. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, look at your hands. Hold your right hand up. You know what the name of that hand is? Blessed. Look at that left hand. You know what it is? It's more blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs>